Okay, let's do some math for fun. Last time we talked about the integral of e to the negative x squared. This right here, one way to answer it is square root of pi over 2 times the error function, and then, of course, plus that constant of integration. So this is a new function, right? <laughs> Unless you just want to say this right here is not elementary, but where's the fun if you just do it like that? But anyway, based on this, is it possible for us to figure out what is the integral of e to the plus the x squared? Notice, we don't have this negative anymore, right? So maybe we can come with another function to answer that. Sure, but let's just make a connection first. This right here, I will answer it based on this, and this is how. In order for me to use that, I need to have the negative in front, but this is positive. But it's okay, positive is the same as negative times negative, so I will look at this as the integral of e to the negative, and I will just Look at that as negative of negative x squared like that. And this is still legitimate because negative times negative x squared is of course still positive. And now I have this negative to help me out, right? I match with that. But in order for me to use this, I must look at a quantity to the second power. So I will look at this as the integral e, and then we have the negative, and then let me open parentheses. I need to think about what I need to put in right here so I can get the negative x squared. Hmm. This is just x squared, so of course I just need to put the x right here. But what to the second power can give me this negative 1? And yes, you got it. I can help you. I can help you. i squared give us the negative 1. So this is the same as that. And from here, because this integral is in that form, so we can just do a little u sub, and let's do it on the side. U equals, let's just do this, right? I times x. And you can just treat i as the, a constant multiple. And perhaps, let me just solve for x so it's easier for me to differentiate. So let me just multiply both sides by 1 over i. So we get x is equal to 1 over i times u. And you guys know me. I don't like to be on the bottom. I like to be on the top. So let me just multiply the top and bottom by i. And you see that x is equal to this is pretty much negative 1, and then times i on the top, we have negative i times u, like that. And then from here, I will just differentiate both sides. dx is equal to, once again, this is just a constant multiple, so you keep it, and then you differentiate u, which is just this, negative i, du. And then you can come back here, this is now the integral of e, and then you have the negative, the input is the u, and then you have that to the second power, and the dx is this now. So you multiply by negative i du, like that. And of course, we can do some little clean up. You can bring the negative i all the way to the front, and then you have the integral e to the negative u squared du. And this right here is pretty much that, but you don't enter x, you have to enter u. So, see, in this integral, it's so cool. There's u and i, right? You act together in this integral, so cool. Anyway, right here we have negative i, and this right here, you just put u right here, and don't forget to write that down. So we will have square root of pi over 2. Are you following me so far? Yes, I am, because now I will have to put u right here in the error function, even though I know you are not error, but unfortunately, I will have to do that to you right now, just for a minute or so. Anyway, this is pretty much it, and as always, we have to go back to the x world. Therefore, I will just write it down. This is negative i, and we have the square root of pi over 2, and this is the error function of the u is ix. So now it's like the complex version of x. <laughs> so ix, like that. And that's it. Plus, plus c, and then of course right here, this is an answer for that right there. But as I said, if you look back here, the way that we answered this was what? We just gave a new function to answer that, right? So why don't we just do the same? We give a new function to this. So let me just write it down for you guys. When we have the integral of e to the x squared dx, as you can see, this right here is going to be a complex version of the error function because you end up with the i's, right? Well, well, the way that we can answer it is this. Instead of the real error function, we can use the imaginary real function for it. The error fun imaginary error function. <laughs> so we put down ERF 
but it's an imaginary version you put on the i right here. This is not multiplication. This was a multiplication. This is just a name, the imaginary error function. And then you will have the input is just x, like that. And similar reason, you are going to still multiply by square root of pi over 2, like this. And of course, let's put on the plus c. So if you would like, you can also answer it this way, right? It's really cool. And in the end, in fact, what I wanted to show you is this and that. That's actually an identity. So here is the punchline of the video. Right here, uh, if you ever enter like an imaginary number into the error function, you will have to do this kind of things. So let me just put this down right here. Notice, uh, just ignore the plus d because this is actually equal to that. So I'm going to write down this, which is square root of pi over 2 times the imaginary error function, so erfi of x. And once again, this right here is the name of that function. And then this is equal to that, which is negative i times square root of pi over 2 times the regular one, the real one, of ix. But the input is imaginary. This is the real error function. But anyway, as you can see, square root of pi over 2 on both sides, so of course, they cancel each other out. Therefore, I can write down the first identity for you guys, the imaginary error function of x. This right here is equal to negative i times the real version of the error function, but the input right here is with ix, and also you have to multiply by negative i on the outside. So this is the first version. Uh, this is one of the first identities that I can put it down for you. And of course, sometimes you may just want to get rid of the negative i. So to do that, we can just multiply both sides by 1 over negative i. So I will actually put this down first though. This right here, when we have the, well, let me put this down in black, the erf of ix. So this is the real version, but the input is ix. This right here is equal to, I will have to divide this on both sides, so it becomes 1 over negative i, and then times the imaginary version of the error function, like this. So do not cancel this sign that high because this is just the name of the uh, function. But anyway, once again, nobody likes to be on the bottom, right? So let's multiply by, especially I don't like to be on the bottom, so let's multiply by i here and i here. And this is i squared, which is negative 1, times negative, which is positive, so you get past the i. So you see that this is actually pretty cool. The regular, or the real error function of i x is equal to i, right, this is just i, times e r f i of x, like that. So perhaps this is the second identity that you guys can take from here. Let me box this one here, and also let me box this right here. So this is it, and in fact, this is what I need in order for us to compute the subfactorial of one half.